So tell me more about that story of how God meant, like God was doing amazing things on your campus, but then how he stirred that like holy discontent in your heart to go to do some about planting new ministries and things like that. So I had, until 2015, I had been to more countries than I had states. Um, I had never, I had never just flown domestically. It's always been on the way out of, out of the country. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to be really honest, I, the only part of Texas, the only part of see, the only part of Texas I knew was Texas. Uh, the only part of the U S that I knew was Texas. <laughs> and, there was this, and there was this one time I went prodigal and I like, I went to New Mexico one time for fun. Um, oh, edgy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and living on the edge. <laughs> and we had, we had several, several campus, uh, summer missionaries that were doing work in Portland, um, whether it's university work or community work, and Collegiate Summit was that year, so it's 2015, um, and so that's coming up again in May. Um, but so I was in Nashville, and it was the first time I'd ever—I think it was the first time you and I had seen each other face to face. And I—I I met Ken Harmon, who's the the director, executive director of Northwest Collegiate Ministries. He said, "Hey, Tarleton," he said, "You've got." you've got these students coming up every summer. You should just come on up. I've got a place for you. Come check it out. And I said, okay, I sounds like great. So I, I talked to my wife, said, Hey, what about this? And somebody watched the kids. And, and, um, that summer, Steve, one of the crazy things is like somehow the, the God ask landed in my, my lap. Um, someone gave, got it for me. And so I read it and it was the first time that I ever, because coming from a Baptist tribe, cooperative program kind of reigns supreme. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I went with the International Mission Board. And so, you know, I didn't have to raise funds. And so the God asked began to knock my paradigm and kind of rattle my cage a little bit. And I got up to the Northwest and I think we walked 15 campuses um, from, from Eugene all the way to Seattle. Um, and, you know, we walked the big sexy ones, like we were at University of Washington, which is like 40,000 students, you know, we were at U of O, Oregon State, Portland State. Right. But we also walked a ton of other campuses that were 20,000, 25,000 students, and there was no ministry there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was, I was, we were at Portland State, and there are three campus ministries at Portland State at the time. And if you, it's a campus of 30,000 students, I think. If you add up all the campus ministries together, there's 60 of them, you know, 60 people in those three campus ministries. And I remember sitting at um, a coffee shop off the green space in, in Portland State, which is a beautiful campus. It's right in the middle of downtown. You just kind of walk in into campus or off of campus and you can't even really tell the difference because it's all high rises. It's kind of like um, NYU. And uh man, I just started bawling. I'm just sitting over this cup of coffee and I'm just weeping and, and Bethany's, you know, patting me and uh, Ken Harmon's like, Clayton, what's going on? And I said, I just don't know. I've never, I never knew there were places like this. I never knew there were campuses like this in the U.S. I never knew there were students walking campus and they, they couldn't find the gospel if they wanted it. Mm. And I said, I don't know what to do because this, for the first time in my life, I had some influence and I could send people because up until this point, I was just a, a 20 something year old. And I was like, well, I, I can go. That's all I have. It's all, all I can do. I can go, which mm-hmm. is how we ended up in the Middle East. Um, and I just realized like somebody has to go. This, this is unacceptable that students are walking campus and the, and the gospel's not interrupting their lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we, we prayed and fasted and you can ask um, my team and ask different folks. I just came back and said, I don't, I don't know what to do. And it was just kind of this identity crisis that I wrestled mm-hmm. with. I just walked around like a zombie for a couple of months, um, trying to sort out what the Lord wanted for me. Um, and so basically I stood, I, we started that August and I stood up in front of our leaders. I said, Hey guys, I just want you to know this is what the Lord's doing in my heart. I said, I may not be here next week because uh, I may move to the Northwest. <laughs> next week. Wow, let's turn around. But also, I need you to understand that if I stay, then my expectation is that you will go. Wow. So, so I'm praying the Lord would send 20 of us over the next several years. I said, I just need you to know that's not an ambient, like, 
20, like I'm, I'm looking at you, and you, and you, and this may be crazy for you, but that's okay. Cause if you'll do it, the freshman will follow. Um, and I remember st standing in front of our large group and saying the same thing. And, you know, to the point where people are rolling their eyes in the back. Um, mm. and, and the Lord asked us to stay, um, but to send everybody we know.